Hello everyone, everyone. I am here for my review of 911 on Fox, Season 5, Episode 13. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am Lady T. I like to do reviews on scripted reality shows, reality shows, and reactions. If you're returning, you're one of my people, welcome back. So we don't have any comments from last week, so we're going to jump right on in. Now y'all, this was an emotional episode, and it, and it had a lot to do with fear. So, first of all, Maddie and Chimney Dayton broke up. I kind of seen that coming. Y'all been separated for six months, haven't talked to each other for six months. Granted, she was going through. It was some sort of um, postpartum thyroidism. I think that's what it was, which caused her to believe that she had postpartum depression. And she wanted to get herself fully together before she got back with her family. But now that she is home, they realize that, you know what? Maybe we're not supposed to be together. Maybe it, it had nothing to do with, you know, the ex-husband that came, you know, stalked her and I'm over her in the arms of the angel. And then to do with that that was kicking them apart. It was just it. We just not meant to be. We just gonna be Jihun's parents and that is it. I was like, I, I kind of see that coming. I would have loved them to be together, but hey, she was gone for six months and, you know, they grew apart. So we got this dude and he decides he want to get in the ocean and, you know, be in a little cage to have the sharks swim around him. Now, any activity where I got to sign a waiver like this could happen to you in A, B, C, and D, uh -uh, I'm just not going to do like, I already don't do the water like that for real, for real. And why am I going to go to the, the shark's house and just mess with him? That's his house and the whale's house and the dolphin's house and all the other fish's house. I ain't got no business being out there, in my opinion. Now, granted, I've been to the ocean one time. And I didn't, I knew the waves was rough. But I didn't think they was going to be rough, like, close to the, you know, beach. I was like waist deep. Now I'm five two and a half, so y'all y'all know waist deep. And I just thought that they, that was fine. I didn't know it even waist deep you, that 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 current can bring you under. Did not know that. But this dude, for whatever reason, was like, I'm gonna get into this cage where the sharks are, and get in the cage, and they're gonna drop me down into the ocean. Now. He is already freaking out before they get down there, which is a sign of you knew something bad was going to happen. So he gets down there and dude told him, do whatever you do, do not leave the cage. Dude is down there freaking out, hyperventilating. He doggone trying to break loose. The cage drops from the pulley system. Dude that is in the cage with him is like, hey, bruh, calm down. It's cool. He's not going to swipe it at him, knock his little, you know, oxygen mask, poor system stuff off of his mouth. And he pops up. Now, the cage, you know, dropped to the, you know, to the ocean ground. Now, he didn't pop up too fast. And he got like, whatever happens, got too much pressure going on up in him. So, you know, the 118 got to come, come out. Only problem is, you know, we need to get him to the hot, like a hyperbaric chamber right quick. But the only helicopter close by is already taking someone somewhere, taking another patient somewhere else. And it's like, if we don't do something, dude gonna die. He's already like bleeding out his ears, bleeding out his eyes and all this other stuff. New firefighter lady, she was like, yeah, I seen this, you know, this one firefighter, he did A, B, C, and D. So they take him to like this little meat market and decompress and then get him together apparently he was doing this because he was scared of sharks and it's an emergency therapy i'm like i'm i'm afraid of a lot of things i don't want to be in the ocean to get over my fear of sharks because like i'm not gonna be around sharks like that so i don't need to get over my fear of them that's the way i'm looking at things next case This dude, he um he is a pet sitter. That's what he do. He didn't got offered this job. Nice house to watch this man's pet. Now, when you think of pet sitter, do you think of somebody who's watching your dog or watching your cat or maybe a bird? You know, something like that. 
And the dude was like, yes, this is a nice house. I'm surprised don't nobody want to work here. And I was like, yeah, that should give you an indication of why don't nobody want to work here. This is nice, nice house. They trying to pay you this good, good money. What's the deal? He's like, yes, I had to give my babies their own room and this, that, and that. He got tarantulas. And he didn't put them in their own enclosures. And dude was like, now what now? It's like, I don't know about this. Dude was like, I need a vacation. I haven't had a vacation in years. Please, I will pay you $50 an hour. He's like, $50 an hour? I can get over this. Now, I don't know if I could. Because that means I got to open up this cage and put your food in there. What if you buy the cage and you jump out on me? See, this is where my mind be going with, with stuff like that. So, dude, he's doing his job. He's feeding the tarantulas. He's, you know, having him a good time. It's time to feed the tarantula. It's time to go to bed in one of the tarantulas and get out the cage. It didn't went in there to him. The owner calls 911 like, hey, I'm worried about my baby. Somebody's supposed to be there house sitting my babies, and he ain't answering the phone. It's like, you talking about your tarantula? Dude? Um, no, nah, we ain't finna do that. He's like, well, dude ain't answering the phone. Uh, when the 118 get there, dude has been, what's it called, webbed by the spider. Yeah. I guess that, y'all know, I only know this because watching Charlotte's Web, or, yeah, watching Charlotte's Web back in the day. Then when she would, you know, catch her, her catch her little flower or something, she would not gonna wrap it up, you know, in her webbing, and, you know, I'm gonna seat you right there to later so I can eat on you. So that's what happened to him. He didn't. He was being fed on by the dog on the spiders. It looked like it, I don't know if it was that that the spider had, had babies while she was inside of the webbing, but more than one had popped out. And Duke was all beat up. He was dog on Kate moving all that stuff wrapped up in the spider web. You know how frightening that would be. Like you awake and Kate move and you just being enclosed by a spider web. That just, that is just like getting to me right now, making me look around like, what if there's a spider? Because y'all know spiders be quick. I didn't see the spider dog going. It just leaped and took off running. I was like, okay, you going to mind your business and I'm going to mind you in my mind. I don't like bugs like that. There is a dog on wasp nest on my porch right now. And I kid you not. I flucked the, the wasp off and took off his home. Like, okay, you ain't got your home no more. And you're going to find you another spot. Went right back to that same spot. I don't know if I left a little bitty bit of the dog on it. Um, the hornet's nest on there so he can just continue. But that dog on it, wasp, is right there. It was right there as of last night. It's been there for like a week. Now, I'm too scared to mess with it again because the first time I flipped it off, it like landed on my shoulder and took off like i could bite you right now but i'm gonna give you a warning yeah i don't do bugs like that so next story this lady she just trying to pump her gas she wasn't bothering nobody and this dude walks up give me your money she's like no i'm not gonna give you my money he's looking like well i have a weapon this is how it works i say give me your money you see the weapon, you say ah, and you give me your money. And she said, I'm not, I'm not about to do that. So she was like, you know what? She get to talk back to him. Then she thought gonna just sprays him with gasoline, spurs herself with gasoline. He's like, look here, I will light all of us up. And the clerk in the store came out, like, hold up, hold up, baby. I don't, I don't want you, you know, taking this whole block down because of this food right here. I just don't want to do that. She's like, you right. And he's like, yeah. She's like, boop, and knock him in his head. And she took off running. Apparently, this store gets robbed a lot. I don't know if it's by the same individual, but this store has been known to get robbed, which, again, I would not want to work at a convenience store. It's got so I don't want to leave the house. There was this lady, I think it was like a week or two ago. She was just getting at her gar car and going into her house and some dudes jumped out the car and robbed her in broad daylight. Called her on her little ring cam and everything. I was like, see, that's why I like staying my behind in the house. It's just some craziness in the world. But anyways, a thing to look out for the lady. Apparently the lady, she has been going through some things. She go, a, a thing that goes to the house and the sister's like, I'm looking for my sister. She came here smelling like gasoline. 
She her voice has changed over the last week. She's just acting like she's invincible. We was at the store, some dude had 15 items more than 15 items or less checkout counter. And talking about some, this is one item. Apparently, Athena knows that dude too. And she threw them bottles at the dude, like, we not finna do this. Well, old lady, she over there at the recycling facility threatened to jump because she no longer has fear. And Henrietta, since, you know, Hen, since she's going to school for to become a doctor, she notices the rash on her face. It's like, this ain't got nothing to do with gasoline. This don't look like no rash. So she goes up there to talk to the lady. And she's like, look here, lady. My name is Henrietta. Seen that rash on your face. I think you have eubarg way syndrome. It is a, a disease that hardens the body. And it could be... It could be pressing on this certain part of your brain that's causing you to have no fear. And she was basically like, it's in your head. She's like, so that means it's, it's, it said it's in your head. She said, that means it's in my mind. That means I am crazy. And right when she was put to jump, Buck and I think one of the new um, firefighters was able to like, wrap what looked like a seatbelt around her and pull her to safety. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm happy about that. She was able to get the treatment she needed. These last few episodes are like 911 on Fox, you know, the California version. They have been like dropping all kind of like conditions. I ain't never heard of like that condition. Was it um postpartum hypothyroidism that um Maddie had? I learned about that on here. There's um you work way syndrome. Heard about that on there. Now, granted, I am not a medical student. I am not a nurse. I am not trained to be any of those. But like, I be watching medical shows. I used to watch ER. I still watch Grey's Anatomy. I be watching shows like that, and I have never. I watch towels. I ain't never heard of symptoms like that, or I just don't remember. And I am a good watching of surgeries. I can watch surgeries all day long. As long as they not messing with the nose or the eyes. That's when you. That's where you miss me at. So, but he finally decides to come clean to Taylor and let her know that he had kissed somebody weeks ago. Now, I would have liked for him to have told her before she got rid of her apartment because it seemed like she had got rid of her apartment earlier that day, went to go do the walkthrough and everything. So now she ain't got nowhere to go. Buck and Maddie did discuss how she has a, he has a, um, he's always wanting to clean the people and she's always wanting to run. She did that with her ex-husband. She did that when she thought she, you know, hurt ji He, he always wanted to clean to keep people. Connie Britton's first art character, he wanted to cling to her. Now he's clinging to, um, Taylor. I was like, dude, I wish you had told her that before she had got rid of her apartment. But, you know, eventually she comes back and she's like, I'm not really mad that you would kiss some random girl at an apartment. It's like, I know you have your abandonment issues, so are you trying to trap me? It's like, she just basically, don't lie to me no more. Just tell me the truth. And he did not tell her that it was new girl from work. I'm like, see, but this is, this is the same with you. People say, tell me the truth, and then you don't tell the truth, and then... They get mad at you for not telling the truth. Just be honest. This last little scene had me upset because Christopher, he in there playing his games, having him a good old time, and he hear Eddie in there just wilding out. Eddie, well, we kind of found out after Christopher could get the door open, he calls, you know, Buck. Buck, his guy, daddy. That's Uncle Buck. I need you to come over here. My daddy, something's wrong with him. He's not opening the door he's scared rightfully so well apparently eddie had started to get in contact with some of his old um military buddies and he found out that some of the people that he had helped in the military saved their lives actually they have all gone on now like one committed suicide one of them od'd one of them was in a car accident there's a lot and like he has not been feeling his feelings, but he was taught that um, showing or showing fear is a sign of weakness or something like that. So once he did start feeling his feelings, it, it was too much for him. 
So I was like, okay, we're going we gonna to need Eddie to get together because we don't want Christopher out here all upset. And we just need Eddie to get together just for sake for Eddie getting together. So yeah. And that was the gist. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. It's commenting, you know, that lets us know, you know, you want to communicate over there. Subscribe so you can be one of my people. Like this video so you can let YouTube know that, hey, it's something going on over there. And sharing because sharing is caring. This is Lady T said enough. Have a good one.